been many heroic performances today from both sides. And Clarence defending for dear, dear life here. Noonan again being very good, close to best of field. That hand pass from Dean intercepted though by Quayle. He goes again, gets it towards Steneman. Inboard hand pass to Humphrey. Steneman might get it again. No, Richie beat him to it. Oh, good work from Richie, and he finds Ryan. He kicks it out of bounds on before Cooney's going for because he didn't hand pass it to him. Well, certainly that was very defensive play by Stevie Wright. They had control of the ball. Ashley Quayle into the forward pocket. Higgins had an opportunity to put in front with Vicky Eisel. Wasn't paid the mark, Bob. I'd say he'd been paid the free kick over the shoulder. Yes, but I think you'll find he had pretty good purchase on the ball anyway and uh, was paid the free kick, as you said, but clearly was one or the other. My word, what an important kick. He's experienced, and he's just pushed it to the left. Well, you can't blame Eisel there because that kick has gone right to left. The wind's been blowing it left to right all day in that screen and in that in that end, and on that screen for that matter. And the shifting wind causing problems for the players. Very blustery here. It was atrocious this morning in some parts. We almost had snow. It was hailing. And then it's been pretty good, though, for the majority of the game. The wind, the only real problem. Winter composed out towards the wing. Fry almost took the mark. Not on that occasion, though. Oh, Richie. Clever work from Richie. This looks promising for Clarence. Holdsworth across to Cooney. Cooney chips the half forward. Wilton went at it hard. McCartan, though, after Cullen fumbled. Kicks to centre half forward. Smith! Athletic attempts. Couldn't hang on. Picked up by Daniel Holm. Heads for the boundary line. Jones in Hopkins shoot. Won't get there. It is blowing an absolute gale here at league headquarters. And I'll tell you what, the 13 or 14,000 fans that have braved the conditions really should be congratulated. Higgins, he puts his hands down, couldn't control the ball. Lee Horn wraps it up. And Daniel Holt comes in there and makes certain that the umpire takes the ball back. Yes, Rob, it's just incredible the way this wind has uh, switched around. Right from the start of the game, it's gone in all directions. Dean got the hit away, got it to Donato. He's caught with the ball. Back towards Richie. Richie just chips it up towards Cullen. Cullen lost sight of the ball, and Wooten comes out of defence. Kicks it long. He's got Browning. In front was Jones. Gurry sits behind Wade, and the ball out of play. A number of the players who have been terrific in the, in the lead-up games just haven't quite come up for New Norfolk today. 24 points the difference. They're edging closer, but they're not getting significant inroads into that scoreboard. And Noonan and Gary going at it. Hasn't been too much rough stuff. In fact, the only rough stuff today really provided by a trainer. I think he was a trainer, certainly wasn't a runner. And he was giving Stephen Fry Maryhill in that third quarter. Richie creates a path for Wade, who's been very good, as has Stephen Wright, particularly early with his two goals. Right round the corner to centre half forward. Guess who? Danny Noonan. Absolutely fantastic. Spots Richie. This might just about seal it. He's closing from 35. Noonan and Richie, what an effort. And five goals the margin now. Going to make it awfully difficult for them now. Noonan, the significant player in that third quarter. Great camera work again from behind the goals. And which he is damaging once he's inside 50. And to be 30 points down five minutes into the last quarter is going to be a big ask for these young fellows from the Norfolk. A few of them have just lost focus a little bit. Denneman needs to lift a little bit in that middle area there. He's been well held by Holdsworth for the majority of the day. And I guess everybody's got to put their hand up now if they're going to come from behind and win a grand final. Dean again gets that hit down. Donato across to right. They're in control. Right. He's long shot at goal. Is it going to run through? It bounces high. He made it. Yeah, great. It's really, that's a captain's goal. Came out of the middle. Kept going. Could see that the goal square was vacant. Had to go all the way himself. You can just see he's crossed that 50 metre line, watching it intently, waiting for the goal umpire to raise both hands. And you might recall he did a uh, similar feat 
in the 1993 grand final that really sewed it up for them. I wouldn't mind backing now that that's sewed it up for them at this particular point in time at the seven minute mark of the 94 grand final. Kicking into the breeze. Fantastic for Clarence that they've got the first two of the last quarter. The hot favourites and reigning premiers on their way to back-to-back -to -back flags. You know, in fact, they won't give up and there's still plenty of time for them. Seven and a half minutes, but they've got to get a move on. But G. Wright's been good. Groundless, beaten by Stevenson today. And passes over the corner and Wilton tries to keep it in. You know, in fact, what have they got to do now? They've got to really attack the footy hard. Probably take some risks. Yes, I think uh, Humphrey's tiring in the centre there. Battled injury over the last two to three weeks. Uh, the lock's been left to him. See him get the ball again out of the throw in. The ball's on the ground and Fry tries to wrap it up. He comes out to Noonan again. He gets his handball away. Brownless. Off towards Dean. The ball up in the forward pocket. Cooney runs onto it. Kicks it back in towards the corridor. Sitting back is Gurry. He transfers play. He's got Smith out on the wing. Smith. He's got a packet. paddock in front of him. In towards Hill, been very quiet. Oh, wonderful play, Daniel Hull. Punches it, fists it towards the boundary line. Great defensive play. That was tremendous because he Hill gave, gave him a start of about five metres. Hill went away and Hull closed right at the death when he had to. McCartan might get a free kick here. Yes, it's going big McCartan's way. Open forward line. He's just got to go with a long barrel. Edwards and Meisel on long leads. Oh, Eisen stayed down. He did this last week. Mickey Eisel will kick a goal for New North Bay. Some lucky kid's going to have a free footy in uh, Letitia Street. But badly needed that one for New North Bay. And it's ended up on the domain, Rob. 11-10-76 <laughs> as we see Eisel streaming in towards goal. New North Bay 7 4 46. Five goals the difference. They'll need another couple of quick ones if they're to really have any chance at all. As I said earlier, I thought Wright's goal was going to be the sealer. But McCartan, rucking infringement, long bomb in. Edwards got pushed out and went underneath the marking contest. And rather fortuitously, Isaac was at the back. Jones, he's the player to take the ball out of the centre, up towards centre-half forward. Cullen, who's been very good today, his handball is smothered. Goes back in again, butters up very well. Gets it over to uh, Donato. The ball comes back to Wilton Court with the ball out of play. Well, they're working extremely hard in their forward line, Clarence. All players, they can see that back-to-back -back coming. McCartan down to Blackaby. He's wrapped up. McCartan again taps it forward. Richie underneath the pack. He's looked at his work rate in the last quarter. It's wrapped up by Stevie Wright. Should have been holding the ball. We saw that earlier in the game. But he's the captain coach. Does it make a difference, Bob? Shouldn't. Correct. Thanks for that exchange, fellas. McCartan goes again. Some stats for him. And that's a free kick to Wade. He might be playing his last game. Not far away from Rewalt's club record, but he kicks it towards the forward pocket, and Cullen's got it. And Johnny Cullen, one of the more skilled players in the competition, has a chance to extend the margin to six goals again. Jason Wilton on the mark will be offering him all sorts of advice. He'd be best served to ignore it. Cullen has a snap. Oh, what a great kick. Fantastic kick, Johnny Cullen. He bent it around. Ooh, great goal from that. That's probably one of the hardest spots at North Hobart to kick a goal. That in front of the scoreboard, but that is a magnificent kick. Judge the win to a nicety. And anybody who can do that on a fluky day like today, you can see a great shot from behind it. The wind curling it through. And that, uh, in my view, it's all over. Six goals up and uh, less than 20 minutes to play. Dean, been fantastic against the cart today. Gets the hit out. Orby just had one of those days, unfortunately. Comes back to Dean. Pops it up in the air. Browning, let it go. Heard his quick kick out of the pack. Holdsworth's got an opportunity. Taps it forward. Gurry gets it out to Deniman. Deniman across to Morby. Morby out towards Blackaby. Blackaby, he's got Hill free. Can he get around? He gets around Winter. Runs inside. He's going to be tackled. He's dropped the ball. 
And really, that's unfortunate because he had an opportunity to score and the ball goes out to Winter, who clears from half back. And Clarence, I think, starting to celebrate now as we're 12 minutes into the final quarter and six goals the margin. And Brownless has got it on centre wing. The Ruse led by 10 points at half time. They extended it to 25 at three quarter time and they're going away against the breeze as McCartan takes one of those trademark marks drifting across half back. Off to Quail. Quail out wide now towards the centre wing area. Finds teammate here in Horn. Inboard towards Higgins, who's had a tough old day. Eisel's got about 30 yards on his opponent here. He's got a million options. Decides to go in short to Hill. And Hill can go back and take the mark. White screaming for it in the goal square. But he's being claimed. There's our shot from the cherry picker camera. Big Phil up there having the time of his life in these windy conditions. Phil shot a goal. Oh, dear. If there were any sort of chance, they needed that. And Daniel Hull has done another great defensive job on a very, very dangerous opponent today, number 16, Hill. I don't think that was a pat on the back, more like a sharp. 12-10-82, Clarence, New Norfolk, 7-5-47. 13 minutes in, Mark Richards from fullback. It's long, out towards the uh, halfback flank, but Mickey Eyes was sitting in that zone, did it well. He chips it in, Edwards an opportunity. One of the few he's had today. Possession number five. Tim Edwards from 50 metres. It's long, it's high, it might clear the pack. Oh, kick. What a wonderful kick. An excellent kick from Edwards. It's his second. Kick one in the second quarter. And good use of the football from Michael Eisen. A pretty ordinary kick out from Richards. There's an excellent kick. You see, he just kicked it right on the 50 metre line. He's only kicked it 52 metres. But that extra two metres was enough to get it over the top of the the pack on the goal line and another couple from Tim Edwards and needed very quickly but they need to clear it out of the center square first of all 29 points the difference Dean has been tremendous all day in the ruck chance for quail they need possession here New Norfolk Gurry runs in a hole to it but then gets around him kicks it out wide towards the center wing where Blackaby has taken the mark they get too quickly there's some hope for New Norfolk Blackaby, ordinary old kick. Taken though by Morby. Will we all have trouble getting around home? Picked up by Horn. Horn in towards full forward. What way will the bounce go? Richards backed his judgment and did it well. And the big fella who kicked four for Clarence as a full forward last year. Taps it forward. He's been a tremendous defender. Denneman this way. That's where he's hung on for a long time. Almost lost it. Right tackle. Goes down. Gets the free kick. And no wonder he's grinning. Plenty of reason to smile. His kick out towards the half-back flank. Scotty Wade, handballs long. Richie has a paddock in front of him. He's still got about 30 metres free. Chips it short, intercepted by Humphrey. Not good play by Richie. Backing up is Wilton. He looks tired, but he's been wonderful for them today. Out towards the half-back flank, and Stevie Wright picks up. Kicks it back. Richie in front. Gee, that was good positioning. That was tight, you know, folks. There's a few tired Clarence players out there too, and Peter Ritchie is one of them. And his kick finds Cullen 52 metres out. John Cullen, 14 possessions for the day. And his last goal was absolutely centimetre perfect. Well, it's a wobbly one. It's going to fall short in front and on the ground. Coming out was Young. Heard. Chucks the ball, tries to get it around the corner. Dak tried to intercept, but just couldn't quite reach the ball. So it's a nice, even five goals the difference, and Clarence fans, I suspect, can start celebrating in about 14 minutes. 16 minutes into the final quarter. And Wilton, who's just simply been fantastic today. Knocked up getting possessions. And Holm has just marked it inside the boundary line. He's had a good day. 14 possessions, but he's done a good job on Hill. Wade, in his last game, chips it out wide. Nick Davey, number 20, gets his chance on the field. He's 
been warming the bench all day. And it looks as if he'll be on to savour the moment if Clarence get up and win this premiership. It's looking theirs at the moment. 30 points the difference. Richie to Noonan. Wilton again standing underneath the ball. He must have some sort of chronic disease. No one's gone near him. He's got Gary at centre half back. He's been a wonderful player for them. Plays on, kicks it long towards centre half forward. No one home and Fry, who belts off and runs in towards centre half forward, kicks it straight back to the person who just kicked it to him. Gary out towards half forward. Richie runs back. The ball's on the ground. Quayle kicks it around the corner. Eisel and Winter, Winter too strong. Traps the ball underneath him. Hills over the top. Tries to get it out. Hull finally does. Noonan, been a wonderful player for them. On his left foot, chips it out and gets Stevie Wright, who's been terrific in the last quarter. Holdsworth, also been good for them. He's got Jones. Jones has got clear passage in support. McCallum, his kick's not a good one, but it's going to bounce towards the boundary line. And we'll see a ball in in the forward pocket. Just spotted the kid with the hardest job today off screen, Bob. The ice cream vendor. He's about 10 years old, and I'll tell you what, it's pretty cold here. It's windy, it's wet. He hasn't made a lot of dough today. Snap in towards goal, and it's just missed. Cooney couldn't get there. He's been quiet today, Gavin Cooney. He's got a bit of time on the bench, but see, it's a team game football, and everyone can share in what promises to be a, a memorable night of celebrations on the eastern shore of Clarence Get Up. And they're only 10 minutes away. They lead by 30 points. And Groundless, who's just crept into the game in the second half, is very quiet early. Has taken another mark. We put Wade under the hammer there. Blackaby caught him. But Groundless goes to lend a hand and make amends. And he blazes away from about 55 metres. Cooney the big shot. Dak lurking, but he went the wrong way. And Stevenson has been one of their best. Forced to hand pass before Wright can get there. He looks exhausted as well. Well, he's done a wonderful job as captain coach. He really has led by example. 31 points the difference. Richie, quick snap out of the goal. Quayle, the player to kick the ball, is going to beat all players over the boundary line. Lee Horn, just quite quick, quite hit that, that ball. Boundary throw in. McCartan against D. McCartan this time. Horn. Now that's what you call almost a camel ride, that one. On Matthew Jones. Well, we've had a bit of everything today. I think Bob's been visiting the full the menagerie service. here today. <laughs> the full menagerie. The donkey ride, the camel ride. You've got 10 more minutes, Bob, to come up with another couple. I think we'll stop there. Thank you very much. Horn around the corner. Kicks it up towards the wing. Matthew Smith, who shaped up to Darren Winter in the third quarter, couldn't take the mark. Hill steals it, though. Great searching hand pass to his ex North Hobart. No, he wasn't. Morby. Morby left North Hobart before Hill got there. He dropped the thing, kept going, Morby. 2 1 here to Clarence and Winter as cool as you like. Takes an excellent mark. Appreciated by the 14,230 patrons who have braved the elements today. And that is the largest grand final crowd for about three years. And they've done it in cold, blustery, hopeless conditions. Davey with a kick. Up towards the wing. That's his first. He's been warming the bench all day. Noonan, he'll go close to best of field honours today. Might have a Daryl Borlock medal sitting around his neck before the afternoon's out. And Davey's got it back. Well, he's had a touch of the ball and Hurd takes that from him. Chips it forward. Not a good handball. Morby intercepts it. Quail. Been pretty good for them today. Kicks it in towards the forward pocket. Sitting behind was White and Richards, who's done an excellent job at centre half back. Punches it over the boundary line. Well, they all have a cross there. Bob and Hull, McCallum, Winter while he's there. Fry, Hurd, of course. Very, very, uh, very strong defence. And that's really what uh, what has set the game up for the Clarence side today. Horn sits behind it. Edwards tries to take it out of the pack. Hill, he's wrapped up. Gets a small kick away. Blackaby's wrapped up as well. The defence is really tight. Edwards off the ground into space. Isaac's got an opportunity. McCallum goes for the boundary line and did it well. They're very good at that sort of thing too, aren't they, Bob? They know that they can use the boundary line as, the, as their best friend if they're under pressure, if you like, for want of a better expression, but they do it ever so well. They've got uh, great confidence in each other and, and importantly, they prepare to run down the ground once they've won possession. Home wrapped up. Out towards Fry. Comes to Cooney. 
and Cooney backs his pace, did it well, gets it up towards the wing. Brown was the only bet for Clarence. Taken by King, but again, a great example of the ferocious tackling that's been on offer here this afternoon. Noonan, though, gives it away. Taken by Gary, who's been good today. McCartan over the top. Morby, you're in trouble. Gets it to Deniman. Deniman tries to slip his opposing number in. Stevie Wright couldn't do it. King searching hand past this, but Fry the camel. You were speaking of camels moments ago. There's one there bursting out of halfback Stephen Fry. That's his nickname, Bob Kitty, but it's been marked by Gary in the centre. Off to McCartan. Here's Quayle. Got to get excited about something. Quayle towards full forward. Richards the high leaper. Oh, Hill took his eyes off it. Comes to Wade. Wade's quick kick in towards the centre. Dean, awkward attempt. Horn out wide to Matthew Smith. Smith will go long. In towards full forward. All Clarence here. And the mark's been taken by Cooney. And he's got Stevie Wright in the back pocket. Stevie Wright, he chips it further out. Noonan sitting out at half back. Goes to play on. The umpire hasn't called it. Steadies. Kicks long. Davey didn't expect that. And the ball is tapped forward. Oh, very, very cleverly done to Cullen. Cullen's kick in towards full forward. Sitting back to Dak. Young with him. Young caught by Dak. Handball's back. Gary, been sensational. Dak butters up again. Puts the ball to the ground. Dropping the ball. Not paid. And Young takes it out of play. Done a pretty good job, David Young. Been sitting on the bench for a number of the finals and coming into that position, they obviously picked, uh, picked him forward, Dak. The strength factor coming uh, in his favour more than anything. He's done it fairly well. And you've got to feel sorry for the patrons here who are just braving the elements. Rain pouring here. McCallum, though, from 48 metres, can kick another Clarence goal. This will go very close. That's it. McCallum has absolutely firmly and very tightly sealed it for the Roos, and they're on their way to back-to-back -back flags. No question about that, Rob. And when you've got a half-back flanker, or in fact, he's been most of the day in the back pocket, he's run off Smith. Good shepherd by Noonan. Well, half a shepherd by Noonan on uh, on Young Smith as he was running down. We didn't quite see it in the picture. A very ordinary attempt by Chris Sproul to get a hand across to try and smother the ball. But uh, been fairly emphatic that whole back line for the whole year. That's really held them all together. And when you see the defenders running down, kicking goals, you know you're very well close to being home. 37 points the difference as the ball is wrapped up in the centre bounce. Darren Deniman, he's worked hard. But Holdsworth's done an excellent job on him. It's another bounce down. Dean, my word, he's improved. The ball comes out. Sprout is the player who will eventually pick it up. He comes in, ball pops it over to Higgins, who's had a quiet day. In towards the uh, 50 metre line. Humphrey being quiet. Oh, terrific play across to Hurd. Hurd pops it up high, puts right under pressure. Edwards, who's come out in the centre half forward, couldn't control it. Morby. Picks it up, handball's over. We've got Horn, Horn further forward. Dean King and Hurd, the player. Just too much pressure on the new Norfolk forwards, having to use the ball under pressure on too many occasions today. And a boundary throw in. Into time on now by some 25 seconds, and Clarence can start celebrating. 37 points there in front of New Norfolk, who have been. Quite outstanding today, and particularly in the finals, but Clarence by far the more polished performed side, you'd imagine, and they thoroughly deserve this premiership in 1994. Ball still in dispute. It's been a messy sort of a day, this. The elements haven't been kind to us. Eisel picks it up now. High kick. It'll be play on. Didn't travel the required 10 metres. And look at those players searching for a kick. Ironically or not ironically, Noonan gets it out towards Richie. Noonan's been very good in those tight clinches, and when he's got it, he's used the ball very, very well indeed for the Roos. Another player who's been very good in the last quarter has been Peter Ritchie. Dean gets another hit out. Deniman handballs across to Gurry. Gurry's long kick into the pocket. Winterback's back. Richards from behind. Fantastic punch finds Cullen. And Hull just trots out of defence. Kicks it out to the half-back flank, and Richie there, steadying for Clarence. There's no question about who's going to win it. He just pops the ball over to Scotty Wade. Scotty Wade chips further out to the half-back flank. The ball's dropped there. Morby, he's piled right over the boundary line by Stephen Fry. And the boundary umpire will ball it in at the 26-minute mark of the last quarter. 
27 minutes now gone, just passed over, and Clarence take it forward now from Cullen and Cooney, and Brownless has marked slightly into attack. 14,230 fans here this afternoon, and Davey has come on and got a few possessions in the final quarter after sitting on the bench all day as the 20th man. Won't Paul Dack on screen there relish this moment. Playing against his former club, I think he was sad to leave them, but after 10 fruitless years, Dak will play in a TFL Premiership side. Humphrey over the top now to Matt Smith. Cullen picks it up. No, he doesn't. Jones has it. Hand pass out the direction of McCallum. He can kick another one. Shocking kick. Might be marked by Brownless. No, it was knocked away. And another behind to Clarence. It was that handballing skill you were talking about earlier, Bob, from Humphreys. Just a lazy old hand pass across it. It didn't find its...